Hi guys, it's March 21, 2018. So we're hearing that the economy is doing much better and unemployment, well, it's at the lowest. Yeah, Americans are back at work. Yay, Trump. All right, the economy is not doing well. And it's because of the corruption, which I will get to in a second. But I just want to show you, and I want to focus on pensions pensions. If the economy was doing so well, then, well, people wouldn't be suffering as much as they are. And there's more and more suffering due to Social Security, it never getting any kind of substantial raise that could meet the raise in the standard of living. And pensions. Pensions are being cut all over. Retirees are seeing less than, than promised. And now we're at the point of quote-unquote pension crisis. And it is due to corruption and government officials stealing your money. And we know that this occurs but we allow it. I don't know why, but we do. So, for the fifth straight year, the Postal Service can't meet its pension obligations. This year, it's $6.9 billion in the red, default. Um, California will be haunted by the pension crisis for years to come. Pennsylvania, like many other states, is facing a huge underfunded pension deficit in its defined pension plans, a 70 billion shortfall in two large plans for teachers and other state employees. And this article, The Slow Road to State Pension Reform, well, that slow road, those Government officials that you put into your state offices can't seem to figure out what to do about this pension crisis. But people keep getting less and less. And the threat, the threat of not seeing much at all is staring everybody right in the face why more states are tussling with their teachers. Whole lot of states are cutting pensions to teachers. Kentucky State Senator Joe Bowen got so many angry calls this month after proposing that teacher pension benefits be cut that he decided to change his cell phone number. Pension fund problems worsen in 43 states. The news continues to worsen for America's public pensions and for the people who depend on them. And it's not just public pensions. Risk. The coming pension crisis. So, let's see, millions and millions of retirement promises about to collapse under the weight of cold logic and uncaring math. No, it's collapsing under the weight of greed and corruption. Stealing your money. New Jersey, Kentucky, and Illinois continue to lose ground and now have only about one-third of the money they need to pay retirement benefits. And three states had double-digit declines in their pension funding ratios in the past year. Colorado, Oregon, Minnesota. Some of the other most problematic states' plans, state plans include Connecticut. Connecticut, you're such a wealthy state. You're so heavily taxed. And yet, the state of Connecticut somehow can only meet 44.1% of its pension obligations. Hmm. Colorado, 46%. Pennsylvania, 52.6%. And private pension plans, well, seeing the same thing. Uh, aggressive changes to head off Future problems have been made by corporations and companies 
What are the changes? Discontinuation of pensions for new hires, as well as buying out existing plan participants. And according to Boston College's Center for Retirement Research, the nation's 1,400 multi-employer plans are facing a 553 billion hole, billion dollar hole of unfunded liabilities, meaning they don't have sufficient assets to cover what they owe workers. About a fourth of these plans are in the so-called red zone, where insolvency is more imminent potentially within the next 10 to 20 years. Participants in these plans work in the transportation service and manufacturing industries. Their employers, many of which have been trying to withdraw from the plans, including United Parcel Service, Kroger's, large individual corporate plans remain deeply in trouble. Example, General Electric is $30 billion in the hole. So, you guys who are looking forward to retirement, looking forward to those pension promises being fulfilled, you can kiss that goodbye. So, this article posted today, Congress just quietly formed a committee to bail out 200 pension funds. Bail out? What does that mean? Oh, they're going to be hitting you for the money. The U.S. pension system has gotten so bad, Congress is actually planning for its failure. Congress quietly snuck in a provision that forms a committee which would use federal funds to bail out as many as 200 multi-employer pension plans, where employers and labor unions jointly provide retirement benefits to employees. These plans, your money, employee-employer contributions into pension funds, and they take your money and gamble, gamble it away and steal it. It's unbelievable how much corruption is going on right now. It's so in our face. And yet most Americans just continue to do nothing and allow this corruption to continue and worsen. And you know what? I guess, I guess experience is everything. You can talk until you're blue in the face. But when you begin to experience the consequences of this corruption, well, it may just be too late for you to do anything about it. So this is the way America goes. This is how we roll. You know, it's clear that these government officials that we elect loot the Treasury, loot American taxpayers, and then they come back and want you to take them out of the red. Trillions of dollars were handed over to banks. And we just let them do it. I mean, it's so clear, so obvious now, these bailouts. If you had a business and you needed a bailout, you wouldn't get it. You'd go under. 
but everything is just too big to fail for Congress, for corporations, and for governments. Catherine Austin Fitz in this article, The State of America's Pension Funds. She writes, our planetary governance and financial system currently operates significantly outside of the law, whether the cost of war, organized crime, corruption, environmental damage, suppression of technology or secrecy, this lawlessness and the lawlessness it encourages in the general population represents a heavy and expensive drag on all aspects of society, our economy, and our landscape. The underfunding of pension funds in the United States is a symptom of that drag. It is not a self-contained crisis. So, what does she say? If you are a U.S. citizen, you are going to have to deal with the failure by our various corporate, public, and governmental agencies to fully fund pension funds and health care promises. You will be the bailout. These failures will touch you as a taxpayer if you live in a state where the state and local pension funds are significantly underfunded. The impact on your state and local taxes, your property taxes, not to mention the appraised and market value of your home, farm, land, or other real estate, and your municipal systems and services could be significant. Pension and health care liabilities may impact or determine in which state or locality you choose to live. Certainly, if you are planning on moving or buying real estate, researching underfunded liabilities should be on your due diligence list. These failures will also impact you as a federal taxpayer for military and government employee obligations, as well as for the obligations assumed by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. As companies fail or shed their pension funds in bankruptcy, in bankruptcy. If you depend on income from one or more pension funds that reduce benefits as a result of underfunding or that fail and are assumed by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Company, Corporation, sorry, it could impact your quality of life, life expectancy, and health. So, what Catherine Austin Fitz says, there is no pension fund crisis. The so-called pension crisis is the result of a leadership decision that financial obligations to the elderly are expendable. After buying their votes and labor with promises, the leadership is wiggling out of those promises by not funding on a pay-as-you-go basis, then cutting benefits, and throwing retirees overboard. Rather than pay for nursing homes, we prefer to expand the billionaire class and use private savings to provide low-cost capital to the national security state, automate with robotics and artificial intelligence, and invest in space and the transition to a multi-planetary civilization. One particularly good example of this is General Electric. By some estimates, its pension fund is underfunded to the tune of $31 billion. However, during the time its pension fund became so underfunded, General Electric spent $45 billion to buy back its publicly traded common stock. The needed funds were there at one point. It's just that the leadership of the com company decided to funnel it into stockholders' hands rather than to the pensions of the employees who helped build the company. It's time to get angry. It's time for every American to stop paying taxes and try to get some control over, over your communities, over your pocketbook and your checkbooks.
and stop listening to mainstream media tell you that everything is just fine. You may not know how many millions of Americans are literally being killed off because of our fabulous economy. How many Americans are suffering? Millions, millions are. And more millions are coming. Are you one of those millions? We are getting so unbelievably looted, shafted, screwed by our governments, federal, local, state, you're going to see your taxes go up. That's right, because you've got to bail out these pension pools and multi-employer pension funds. You have to bail it out. The gross, at best, one could say gross irresponsibility of those who are responsible for these pension funds, but at worst, the looting, the criminality behind these underfunded pensions, pension funds, It means that we've, we, we really do need to start holding people accountable. We need to start holding people accountable. And I, I'm posting this video because a lot of you are still working. Many of you are counting on that pension when you retire. So many of you continue working in jobs you hate because you're hooked in to the promise of a retirement. And that retirement You'll be receiving these pension benefits. Do you know how many people stayed at jobs believing that they would be getting a certain amount and they're not now? They're really hurting. There is nothing that you can count on anymore. People make promises and they care nothing about breaking them. There is no more security left. So if you are counting on these, this, uh, these pension benefits when you retire, then what can I say? We are a make-believe people. On the whole, most Americans just love living a delusion, love living this Disneyland life of fantasy. And that's why an awful lot of people continue to watch mainstream media and they won't get off of it because the lie is just so much easier to deal with than to face the truth. But when we don't face the truth, we get really hurt. <laughs>